So let's get started with the Honor 8X Max. This phone at the moment is really, really good value. You can get it for about 1700 RMB in China. That is really cheap. You don't find many smartphones ever about that price. This is a really good price considering how big that screen is. It's about seven inches crazy big you get a really good design on this phone as well you get a water drop notch so the screen to body ratio is really good the bottom bezel is not even big considering the phone is absolutely huge it's a really big phone but it doesn't feel huge when you hold it and it certainly doesn't feel like a budget phone even though this thing is in budget pricing it's about 1700 RMB but when you hold the phone, it doesn't feel like a budget phone. It feels good, it feels solid. You get that really huge screen. Bottom bezel isn't that big. Top bezel looks really great because you've got that modern water drop notch on there. It's an LCD screen, but again, for the price, I think it's a really, really great screen. It's bright. The PPI is about 350 PPI, not as much as the more expensive phones we're gonna look at in a second. But overall, I really like the screen and it is absolutely huge. It's got one of the biggest screens of the bunch that I'm about to review. So that's a really great option. You get a Snapdragon 636 in there. It's a decent performer. It's not gonna be the fastest chip, but when I was playing with it, going through things, Everything was absolutely fine and really snappy going through screens. You can put a 256 gigabyte SD card in there, which is a great option with these big phones. If you're having a big phone, you probably want to use it for watching movies or for doing work. So the option to add more storage on there is always great. It comes with four or six gigabytes of RAM, which to be honest is plenty, especially with this processor. On the back there, you get a 16 megapixel camera. They give you a depth sensor as well, which is two megapixels. Now the camera is decent to be honest, Honest, but I'm not the biggest fan of Honor's AI camera because every time it takes a photo it automatically sharpens and smooths and makes your face look completely unreal. That's just my personal opinion. A lot of people like it, a lot of people want their face to be smoothed out and, and brightened up but I personally like more real-to-life images, but on this one it has it. It has a massive battery as well. This is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty much one of the biggest batteries you'll see in any smartphone. A downside is that it uses micro USB as the charging port. It may be a big deal for you if you have loads of USB-C dongles already. Micro USB is certainly dying out, so this is gonna be one of the last sort of phones with micro USB. Having said that, all in all, you get loads of hardware for a really great price. 1700 RMB, huge screen, huge battery, headphone jack, a good camera with loads of modes. So all in all, it's a really great phone. Okay, let's move on to number three on the list. And number three, I'm gonna choose the Galaxy Note 9. Now we all know Samsung Galaxy is one of the best big phones out there. Although the Note 9 isn't exactly very big anymore. The screen comes in at 6.4 inches, which isn't a really big screen anymore. There's lots of phones like this now, but you get Samsung's OLED screen with the curved edges. It's so sharp. The colors are so good. One of the best screens you can get in any smartphone right now. It's Samsung's Super AMOLED panel, the best panels that they can produce go into the Note 9 phone and it's over 500 ppi which is crazy sharp. It's a really amazing screen and because it's a Samsung it is more expensive but the operating system feels like they've spent way more money on it. You get the edge screen and you get lots of other little touches when you're using the phone that just make life easier. That obviously uses the Snapdragon 845 the best chip at the moment, although we're into 2019 now, so we're gonna start seeing the 855 come into more phones. We've got another eight months until the new Note comes out, and that'll probably give us a bigger screen, considering the S10, the new S10 phones that are coming out are gonna have bigger screens. The Note has to come out with a bigger screen because 6.4 inches isn't that big anymore. Because of those curved screens, this phone does not feel like a big phone at all. It feels really compact, now you still get the bezels at the top and the bottom. A lot of phones are going with the teardrop notch, the bottom bezel is really small. On this one, it's symmetrical at least, the top and the bottom bezels are there. I don't think there are gonna be many phones in 2019 keeping the top and bottom bezels. Certainly the new Galaxy S10 phones and I assume this year's Note series will have the hole punch. But looking at the specs of this phone, this is absolutely incredible. It's one of the best 
big phones you can get right now. You can put an SD card in there to give you loads of extra storage. The cameras are just awesome. I test out a lot of phones and whenever you go and look at a Samsung, you can just tell the cameras are just a lot higher quality than, than a lot of other phones. Colors are reproduced really, really well. The colors are just so rich. Samsung phones always turn up the contrast a little bit. I quite like it. You get really contrasty, rich colors. The dynamic range on Samsung phones is always so good as well. The difference between the highlights and the shadows in an image. Everything seems to be exposed really well. You get optical image stabilization on both of those back cameras. That's super important if you want to take lots of video and in low light, you want to take photos. Honestly, the Note 9 has some of the best cameras in any smartphone. You also, because of that Snapdragon 845, get really, really quick slow-mo as well. You can do 960 frames a second at 720p. It's, it's a little bit crazy. I prefer maybe 120 frames a second at 1080p. I think that gives you better looking video, but it's there if you need it. Something that none of the other phones here have is 2K recording on that front camera. All of the other phones have 1080p, which most people think is probably about enough for a front camera. But Samsung go one step further and give you 2K on that front camera. You have a headphone jack in there, it's USB-C, you get NFC and you get the pen. Not all of these have a pen and you can obviously in this one, in the Note series, put the pen inside the phone when you're not using it. Considering the Note 9, I think, isn't really a big phone anymore. It feels actually about the right size. You actually get the pen in there, which is really useful if you want to take notes, if you want to draw, if you want to actually write out words and then Samsung then puts that into typed text for you. When you're choosing a phone like this, things like that that make life easier and give you way more options is definitely a plus. I really, really like this phone. It feels compact. It feels put together really, really well. It feels super premium. It's just an amazing phone that I really like. But let's move on to number two, which I guess isn't better than the Note 9. It's probably about the same depending on what you want, but it's the iPhone XS Max. I wouldn't say this is better than the Note 9. Depending on what you want, it might be. If you're an iPhone user, I definitely recommend the XS Max over the XS. It's got a six and a half inch screen, which is massive for an iPhone. You know it's an iPhone, it's gonna be great. The cameras are absolutely awesome. And when it's in the hand, it feels amazing. The problem that I had with the iPhone 8 Plus was just how big it was. It was an absolutely huge phone that had massive top and bottom bezels, but the iPhone XS Max gets rid of all of that. It doesn't feel like a huge phone. It's definitely a big phone, but it doesn't feel huge because there's basically no bezels at all. You know the cameras are awesome. They've got in-body image stabilization. It's an iPhone, you know all about it. It's gonna have great battery life because you've actually got a big battery in this. One of the best battery life iPhones ever. It comes with all the good points and bad points of iOS. It doesn't have a headphone jack, which may or may not be a big issue for you. If you are part of the Apple ecosystem, if you like iPhones, this is definitely the best iPhone for years. It is an amazing phone with a huge, huge screen. That AMOLED screen, it's a uh, Samsung AMOLED panel, is just incredible. Great for watching movies. You know it's one of the best phones out there. But there are some huge drawbacks of the iPhone XS Max. Number one is the price. It is mega, mega expensive. The biggest problem is that it's just an iPhone with a bigger screen and that huge price. It's just a really expensive iPhone with iOS and nothing extra added on. So you've got that huge price with no added or extra functionality, but it's an amazing, amazing phone. I love that screen and you get huge battery life on that phone. Moving on to number one, this is definitely the winner for me if you're looking for a big screen phone, a big phone, a phone that does more than just a normal cell phone. You're looking for maybe a phablet or something that you can actually do way more on that gives you way more options and it has to be the Mate 20X. I would say this and the Note 9 are two phones that give you more options than just a regular cell phone. The iPhone XS Max is just a bigger version of an iPhone. The 8X Max from Honor is just a bigger screen version of a cell phone, but the 20X 
just gives you way more functionality. You can use a pen with it. It's got a massive screen, a huge battery. It's got USB-C. So if you have any external devices that you want to plug in, you can do that. And it's got a headphone jack. Couple that with an awesome camera. You get the same camera in this thing as you do in the Mate 20 Pro. It is, in my opinion, one of the best cameras out there. I love using this camera. You can see it has autofocus points. When you focus on something using the camera, you want to take a photo, it actually has autofocus points on the screen that you can see so you know where it's focusing. It's a really, really great touch, something you don't even get on the iPhone. That triple camera on the back is just awesome. Wide angle, I love wide angle cameras. That does really, really well. You get a telephoto there with five times optical zoom. That's incredible. That is also better than the Note 9 and it's better than the iPhone. The screen is absolutely massive, 7.2 inches. But because of the screen to body ratio, it's definitely a huge phone. It's absolutely huge. It's bigger than the Note 9, it's bigger than the 10s max from apple it's it doesn't feel massive because the screen to body ratio is so good you get the water drop notch at the top the bottom bezel is also really small it's definitely a phablet i reckon it just goes past big phone territory the 10s max the note 9 i think nowadays you would call them probably the the top of big phones but the Mate 20X, I think, enters phablet territory. It's just that big. But a few years ago, if you wanted a screen that big, the device itself would have been just gigantic. But now, you could make the decision just to buy that as a phone and carry it around in your pocket. The pen is a really great touch. It's awesome to have that. It just gives extra functionality if you want to turn it around and actually use it to write things. The screen is big enough that you can just not even have a TV, stick all of your movies on there and just use that, watching that at night. You can get it with six or eight gigabytes of RAM and it uses the 980 Kirin processor which is the best processor Huawei do at the moment. This thing's got pretty much everything. Everything that you would want in a phone, this thing has. And it's got an absolutely massive screen on top. The colors are really great. It's a really good LCD panel, I must admit, from Huawei. It's a really great phone and it just gives you way more functionality than you get with a big screen smartphone. Huawei also say it has a vapor chamber that funnels heat away from the processor to keep it cool, which is gonna be a good thing if you're gaming. Obviously, you've got the Kirin 980 there, but if it's powering a device with such a big screen, if you're playing games on there, it's probably gonna get really hot. So it's good that Huawei did that to try and keep the processor cool cool when you're doing stuff like gaming. It's a really great phone, definitely the winner for me, definitely the winner of the big smartphone category. So that's it, that's four really great smartphones I think that are big phones. The 8X Max from Honor is incredible value considering that huge screen, but definitely the winner for me is the Mate 20X. You just get so much functionality in that phone. Pretty much anything you could ask for right now in a smartphone, that thing has it.